Welcome to Athletes to Entrepreneurs, the Alumni Journey. I'm Rob Finkelstein, CEO and founder of Alumni Direct. And we've gone out to create a platform to help people to network and connect through common affinities uh, in alumni relationships, whether it be college alumni, whether it be uh, Greek uh, fraternities, sororities, uh, athletes, uh, we're trying to create value back. And, and we've created this show, Athletes to Entrepreneurs, uh, the alumni journey uh, to teach and inspire athletes that there is life after sports. There is a major problem with athlete transition, and we re really want to help impact that. So today we're really excited. I've got Winston October on with us, and he is now the second Richmond Spider to be on here. First one was Adrian Archie, a friend of Winston's. Winston, we won't tell Adrian, but he played a little bit better than Adrian. I'll Adrian will tell you that. But uh, Winston, welcome to the show. How you doing? Hey, thanks for having me, bro. Uh, you're welcome. And so Winston is a uh, former uh, college football player. He played at Richmond and then went on to have a, a great career at both the, uh, the CFL and the NFL. Uh, and now he is a coach. He's been a coach for many years, coached at different college programs, and now he's back at his alma mater. So uh, uh, we're going to talk, uh, I always tell people fun, uh, easy questions. And all that. So the first one is, tell me about uh, playing sports growing up and, and how it helped to kind of um, shape your life. Well, I mean, it was one of those things where, you know, I, I literally went outside all the time and, and, and just ran around and, and uh, sports was just fun. You know, um, it was a way to get out the house and, and uh, my mom used to say, you know, make sure you're in before the lights were out and <laughs> ran all day, you know, and, and um, I still remember um, my dad was a really good soccer player. Uh, originally from Guyana, South America. He's one of the best soccer players to ever uh, play in Guyana. He actually uh, started their, uh, their national team. And, um, and so I was supposed to play soccer. And it's funny that uh, I never, I was always off sides and I just didn't understand the premise of I had to wait, you know, uh, for the other guy. I couldn't be in front of the other guy before the ball was kicked or I didn't like the fact that the goalie would put the ball down. I would try to go block it anyway. You know, and that coach told my mom, like, uh, maybe he should go over there and play that football thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and that's how I kind of got into football. Uh, sixth grade, never forget it. Never forget around sixth grade. That's when John Taylor, I'll never forget John Taylor caught that uh, winning touchdown versus the Cincinnati Bengals. And that, I was hooked. I was ready to go. And John Taylor was the well. I again, we, it's funny we had this conversation before. So Taylor played for the Redskins slash now the Commanders, correct? Yeah. Or, or, or is that uh, no? He played. He played for the 49ers. Oh, 49ers. Okay, I, I knew 49ers. it. Yeah. Okay. And I used to live. So I'm I'm kind of a military brat as well. I lived in uh, California, Fort Ord, California, and um, that's when I fell in love with San Francisco 49ers, the Ronnie Lots of the world, the Tom Rathmans, the the Roger Craig's and the Keena Turner's and, uh, you know, um, Jerry Rice, uh, Jerry Rice, John Taylor, <laughs> Joe, you know, uh, Joe Montana. Right. Uh, and I was just like, this is, this is awesome. This, that's, that's when I got hooked. I got hooked on football. They, they did break my heart one year. They were playing the giants in the playoffs. And I think, I think the giants were winning and, and the 49ers came back and just beat the, beat the heck out of them, like scored like 45 points or something like that. Yeah, was no like, doubt. It was, it was a nightmare watching that. So um, did you have a dream growing up of being a professional athlete? I did. You know, it's funny about that, you know, kind of like putting putting words in, into action. I remember that. That's what I mean. I told my mom that I'd love to be a professional football one day. I'd be a professional football player one day. And she told me to to go write that down and go pray about it. And, and never even would have thought my wildest dreams that I would have uh, played as long as I did. And, and still, you know, sixth, sixth grade, I'm 40, 46 now, been doing it since sixth grade, been in, involved wow. in this football thing. So, a lot, a lot of dedication, hard work. You know, I, I always joke around with everybody on the show. I'm talking about, hey, do you want to be a professional athlete? And a lot of them were. And I said, yeah, yeah I, I wanted to be one too. I just, I didn't, unfortunately, didn't have the skill set. So, I ended up doing this instead. But, uh, right. Yeah, I actually ran cross country and track in uh, in high school and a little bit into college. And then I got hurt. And that was kind of the end of that. So, um, how, how do you think? Um, sports helped to shape you like as far as your personality and, and kind of uh, you know everything that that led up you know getting into college and then beyond well uh, obviously sports is probably one of the 
one of the best parameters for like uh, being able to to uh, having to adjust and improvise and and not really tolerating other personalities, but adapting to other people's personalities and and also teaches you humility, you know, because uh, as you mentioned, you you said you got injured and and you had to probably fight your way back, right? Yeah. Same thing with as a player. Sometimes, you know, the other team's going to beat you or the other guy's going to be better than you. You might think you were a good player. You can't, you know, not, you can't, you got to come back and be ready to go. But also understanding that you might need your teammate um, to help you get back. And I think that's how sports has helped me is understanding that uh, it's just a whole concept of team, you know, saying those saying that you got to trust each other, encourage each other, accept each other's differences and maximize each other's skill sets. And that's kind of the thing that's uh, I've kind of taken from my, my time over the years uh, of being involved in sports. Yeah, I mean, it, it's so much, um, the, you know, there's the practice and the preparation. I mean, it's a lot of hard work and probably I think any athlete goes through just the um, just all that dedication and the sacrifices. I mean, a lot of times I'm sure when your your friends are going out in high school and want to do things, you're like, oh, yeah, sorry, I can't. I can't no, I got, got a game tomorrow or practice or whatever. So that my mom is really strict. My mom, yeah. my, my, mom uh, my mom, you know, she did a really good job of making sure I, I was able to to stay focused on what I need to stay focused on. And but like you said, the dedication, man, there are times where, you know, even, you know, playing in the pros, family come to town and you're playing a, on a Saturday night and they all want to go out Friday night. You really want to go and you can't, you know, but you guys go enjoy. Tell me the stories, take pictures, you know. Um, but, yeah, it takes a lot of dedication. Yeah, for, for sure. So once you're in college and I know, you know again, this, this whole thing, I mean, it's taken up most of your time. But um, what kinds of things and, and I'm going to this is going to be a two prong question, because one will be. Uh, when you were playing and then now maybe as a coach and, and, you know, times have changed, but what, um, what kinds of things did the school uh, do to prepare uh, the athletes uh, for their future after sports? Was there anything going on like when you were there? And if not, um, is there now? Study hall, <laughs> study hall, you know, um, and time management, the, the time management aspect of, you know, um, you know, I never skip a meal like breakfast, the most important meal is the breakfast. But every time I talk to my teammates and you, you said you talked to Adrian, I bet you if you talk, I don't know if he, you know, if you talk to him, he'll tell you that now I, I get up at like four thirty five o'clock. It's like a, it's like a routine for me. Right. And to the fact that my wife is like, yo, it's, you have nowhere to go. And I'm like, I know, I don't know why I'm up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, it, it teaches that routine, that natural routine of, of, of that getting up, getting up early and like being task oriented, you know, like um, going to the professors, like University of Richmond does a really good job of small classes, uh, teaching you how to, hey, going into office hours, you know, getting that extra help, learning how to ask, you know, when you don't know. Um, and, and I think those type of things has helped um, as far as that goes. Did, Nobody did, answered your question. <laughs> Yeah, and 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 kind of like following on that, did, did they do um, did they do anything as far as preparing like for I guess life after sports, so to speak, you know, so that you know a lot of you know I think they I forgot I was talking to a college coach and he said it was it like point zero 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 one percent or something like that of of athletes make it to the professional level. So what did they talk to athletes and kind of say here you know if you don't make it or or after you've made it like what are some of the things that um kind of teaching them what they can do after, after sports. Yeah, you know, one of the things that that here at Richmond, no one's really ever thinking about, you know, um, that, hey, we're going to go to the NFL. You know, I, like you mentioned before, Adrian, I think Adrian came in in a class after our class where we were like, hey, we're, we're, we came in to try to make it to professional football. But Richmond does an unbelievable job of aligning their student athletes with internships, you know, encouraging it. Um, also, they do a really good job of bringing in, you know, professionals and and mentoring the you know student athletes or even the current students. So you're not you're not excluded as a student athlete here at Richmond. Um, 
I will say this though. Uh, I wish that the student athletes would be more uh, proactive in reaching out because those resources are there. I, we didn't really do that as much when I was here at school. Right. And uh, having a tool that allows us to to do that, I think, um, uh, would help. Yeah, and I, I'll tell you, I, I, I was talking to um, uh, a, a professional agent, and they, they cover football and basketball players, and he said the biggest problem that he sees from a networking and connecting standpoint is that the best time to do it is when these athletes are playing. And a lot of times they don't do it then, whether it's they don't know how to do it or just don't have the time or don't think about it. And then when their careers are over, all of a sudden, like, okay, I want to connect with people. I'm like, well, they just don't have that. And, and that's one of the things we're trying to do at Alumni Direct is to, you know, create this platform where, you know, whether it be any type of alumni or athletes can go and they can get, um, you know, help to network and connect and, and it kind of tying it to alumni, which, um, what kind of, um, maybe when you, again, I guess it's just, it's kind of twofold from when you played and now back as a coach, um, do the alumni athletes, um, do they get involved in, in, uh, or other just I mean, not necessarily alumni athletes, could be any alumni from the school, they get involved with players and, uh, across different sports and helping them out. Yeah. You know, it's real touchy with the NCAA and, and, and the rules on alums and, and current student athletes. Um, there are programs that we have here on campus. Uh, they they go through those those channels, the proper channels, to make sure that the players uh, have a, have some type of access. However, um, I think the older I get, the older we get, that generation remembers what it was like, and so more of us are reaching out, you know, uh, and and saying, "Hey, use us as a resource." So I guess the answer is. Um, it's increased a little bit more. Yeah. And I, and I think it's, I mean, obviously like with time, everything gets, gets better. Um, yeah, yeah it, it's interesting. I've had, and you know, cause you, you can relate to like, I can, the you know, pre-social media. And so yeah. I was talking to this one guy who's like a little bit younger than me, but he played baseball and he talked about how, you know, they all went out the night before and they were partying and all that. And then they end up at the field the next day. But nowadays, you know, with social media, you just, you can't, I mean, you can't get away with that kind of stuff. Is no that, do you see that, um, I guess one is an issue. Um, and then two, is that something that you work with the players on and kind of try to coach them on here's, I mean, obviously there's a lot of good things about social media too, but I mean, from the perspective of the negativity, do you try to help them from that perspective? Yeah. You know, I, you always want to use it as a positive feel. Right. Um, and, it, and then, you know, I, when, when I talk to guys about social media, I use the 10, 10, the 10, 10, 10 rule. How is this going to perceive, be, be perceived 10 minutes from now, 10 hours from now, 10 years from now? If, if you can't answer that, then don't click tweet. Don't click send. You know what I'm saying? Delete yeah. it. You know, if you're okay with it being out in the world and when you go to get that, that million dollar job, and they pull up that tweet from 2022. Are, is it going to be one of those things that stops you from getting your job? That's how I, I address it to them, and and then just let them be adults, you know, young adults. Say. Yeah, no, that that's great advice. I mean, I it's kind of like similar. I, I always told my kids and everybody, I say, don't put in writing what you don't want somebody to possibly see because it's real easy to like, you know, yeah. you put something in writing to just a friend and then it gets out type thing that something no you should have said so. Um, one of the, the hot topics right now is, um, is NIL, you know, name, image, likeness. Yeah. And tell me a little bit about, I guess, um, give me your thoughts on it uh, as both like when you played as, and then also now as a coach in, in today's current world. You know, it's funny. I talked to my mom uh, two nights ago. I told her, I said, man, I, you could have held out a little bit longer. You should have, should have waited where I was in college right now. You know, I'm kind of, <laughs> I thought I was kind of upset at her about it, but um I, th I think it's great for the students, the student athletes. You know, uh, the the years that I was in college, we couldn't work, you know, during a year, and we couldn't get any extra benefits. And so, um, having the ability to kind of market yourself is something that I encourage. I, I I'm all about that. Like, um, and coaching the professional football, playing professional football, um, it it kind of. Uh, kind of understand it you know as far as it's a little bit of residual income 
you know, but obviously there's work that goes with it as well. Um, again, it's still new. Uh, everyone's still learning uh, the process, but, you know, if, if, if it can be manufactured and, and, and uh, not manufactured, excuse me, um, if, it can, if it can be uh, uh, policed the right way, right. you know what I'm saying, um, and it doesn't get out of control, then I think, uh, I think it'll benefit college football. And student athlete. Yeah, no, I, I I agree. It's it's uh you know you hear people call it the wild wild west. Like you said, as long as it's managed yeah. properly. I mean, what one of the concerns I was talking to one guy, former NFL player, and he was he likes it and obviously wishes it. You know, back like you were saying back when he was playing that that it was available, and obviously it wasn't it was a long time ago. But um, his only concern is, and and I, I think this isn't just with athletes; it's any young young people out there. But um, that knowing how to manage the money that might come in, like, you know, that knowing that you have to pay taxes and different things like that, or, yep. um, or even uh, one person was telling me about a story where this one guy, uh, they were talking about, we we're talking about last night where this guy gets at Ohio state, he's getting like a new car, like Porsche or something like that, or some, some kind of like fancy car every six months. Wow. I, I don't know what goes on Ohio state. I don't, I don't, I can't speak <laughs> on that. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, if, if, if you hear stories out there, but, yeah. I, I guess the bottom line is, um, so are there, as coaches, are, are there, you know, trying to kind of, you know, prep them or teach them of like, um, just like you're talking about social media, are there things that you can do with them that kind of help them through that? Yeah, process? you know, the, the thing is, like, at Richmond, we don't really have any big ones, you know, but like, I, this is one of my favorite sayings, Rob, I, I say that, you know, I have a PhD in football, and so when it comes to that stuff, that's our compliance, right? you know, our compliance department you know I, I i i lead our players over there you know right. to that direction they got the phd in that but i would just say that you know like anything like when we first started this uh cost of emissions that became a big thing everybody was like oh, why do we want to do that you know and, and it's turned out like it's okay so i think with the like you mentioned management the proper management of it i think that um the compliance department and and uh, administrators can really get that going. And I think it's also great that the coaches kind of stay out of it as well um, so that the players understand, like when they get a job, it's very similar, right? Like right. you deal with HR with your money, right? Like the, yeah. your dealings and all that good stuff. And it's a good preparation for, you know, what's next for them when they leave that, that said university. Right. It, it's interesting, too, because if people say, I guess, you know, most of the time you think of the star athletes, but I, I think it kind of opens up the door to, you know, any athlete, any sport. There's one uh, person uh, uh, down in South Florida, we have the business journal, they're talking about there's a, an athlete who is promoting, um, you know, when, when it was opened up, she promoted like a clothing line. So becoming oh. an entrepreneur because now, you know, she can do that, uh, you know, still playing like a, a senior in college type thing. So um, when you, uh, you know, kind of let's go back to, to graduating. So talk about the transition um, of going from, um, in your case, going from a collegiate athlete to professional athlete. Uh, it was a shell shock. Uh, you didn't, I didn't have as, you, you think you have friends, you know, and you don't, you know, you got, you, you, one guy took, I'll never forget some guys explained to me, he said, hey, listen, I, I need this job because I got mortgages to pay. I got, I got to pay my, open up my eyes. Like, cause you know, I was a young rookie and it was like three of us and young rookie out, we out in Montreal, you know, uh, in a new city, we wanted to go out, you know, we wanted to enjoy the sights. Yeah. And, and one of the veterans felt like, Hey, you guys can't do that. Like, y'all are messing with my money, you know, <laughs> like you have to play well in order for it. And, and that, that was a change. And then the playbooks and then the here, you know, the here and now, like it's not about what you did yesterday, it's about what you're doing right now. And, and I'm glad I had the background and the foundation um, at the University of Richmond of that structure to be able to, you know, be able to, kind of manage all those things but it was it was a challenge it was a challenge at first um but probably like what agent probably has mentioned to you before like once 
once the, the whistle blows and the ball goes in the air, it's just like what happened when you were in sixth grade. <laughs> yep, yep, for sure. Um, so you played football, you played professionally, and then when, you know, like, like a, a lot of what I talked about with the show is, is to teach and inspire athletes that like kind of once, once they've kind of gone through that and it's over with just, you know, moving on to, to different things. So um, how was it for you? I mean, I, I, you know, every athlete obviously has a different story, but how did you handle not playing anymore? And, and, uh, and you know, to talk about that and then maybe some of the advice that you can give, you know, uh, about that. Well, you know, um, the, the, the game tells you that you're not going to play anymore. You know, uh, I was fortunate enough not to have um, any major injuries. Um, and, you know, I uh, essentially was like, I'm going to take a year off. And, you know, a lot of the wear and tear, the mental aspect of it, because that plays a really big game. It play, plays a, a really big part uh, in, 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 in you being able to have sustainable success. Uh, the training that goes into it <laughs> and uh, you, you do a lot of training for 18 weeks in the CFL's 18 week season. Uh, but I, I just had to tell myself like, hey, it's over. You know, even though you're watching the games, you're watching your friends that are still playing, you think you still got it. Uh, you go out to the gym and you're working out and, and you're playing basketball and the guy that's playing pickup basketball, you think you're still in the arena and he's like whoa chill man like whoa i'm just trying to get a sweat in why are you like why are you diving for the ball you know, you know what i mean like yeah um, that that transition right there kind of like you kind of had to like slow it down and then finally say hey what's next and i think that's where uh, my wife who i've known for uh since college she did a really good job of helping me navigate to that next level of, hey, what's next? So I think you need support. You need people that understand, that can help you uh, kind of understand that, hey, that, that that's behind you. Let's move forward to what's in front of you. Right. So was there, what was the, uh, your gap between, um, you know, playing professionally and then becoming a coach? Yeah. So like, so what happened is I, uh, some of the, the GMs were asking, are you, are you done, done? I said, well, I think so. And then I uh, decided to, um, I worked for New York City Marathon. And as I was working for that, um, I worked for a, 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 buy, a sub, pro, uh, a sub uh, company called Team for Kids that was, you know, uh, we basically set up, we're living in uh, New York. I was living, I was living in New York, working in New York. And our deal was we set up basically uh, workout plans for kids in New York, so all through the city. And they would basically uh, hire us to um, to implement, you know, um, recess and implement different athletic uh, programs for these high schools. And they paid us, and that money went to basically funding the New York City Marathon. And I started getting a really good feel of I was like getting a euphoria of like, man, this feels good watching those kids get excited running around because I kind of saw myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I stopped training. I stopped training. The further I got from training, the more I got away from, hey, I want to go continue to go back and play. And that's when my wife, you know, I, I would literally like, we would be at track like we had we'll set up a track meet and i'm yelling like let's go let's go let's go and high five and my wife one day saw me and was like you need to get into coaching you need to get into coaching that's that's probably what you should do and that's how it happened um i got a call i got a call in 2006 about coming back here and i was like no i don't want to do that and then in 2007 i got a call again and is my college coach and he was like my db coach left do you want to coach i know you want to coach you're doing it and i was like okay <laughs> you know and i ended up um that's how i ended up at, at bmi that's great long, yeah. long story to short story that's how that all happens and it's it's rewarding being a coach i you know i, I did um 
now I've seen nothing like it to love what you're rapping. I mean, I coached, uh, you know, my son's sports. Right. And, you know, coached the basics, you know, baseball, football, soccer, all that. And eventually uh, baseball and then like going from Little League to, you know, managing or head coach, whatever you want to call it, a travel team, baseball team. Right. And, uh, it's it's a thankless job. Uh, you know, I'm sure, you know, you, you probably see some of that, but we uh, it, it's interesting. You know, the one thing and, and you won't you can't t- attest it now because you're still coaching. But uh, I was talking to somebody we talked we're talking about athlete transition, but it's interesting that people don't necessarily think about that trans the parent transition or the coach transition. Cause here, like for me, I was like trend, like every day, I mean, five, six days a week, I'm coaching the travel baseball team maybe between practices and double headers and tournaments and all that. And then all of a sudden it was done. Yeah. You know, and I was like, what do I do myself now? <laughs> and right. It, you know, a lot lesser version than some of these athletes go through, but I mean, I, I guess something to think about as well. So I'll, I'll tell you this, it, it actually is pretty similar to be honest with you. That same feeling that you got is is the same feeling that the athletes do get, to be honest with you. Yeah, and then I guess it's finding what you could do. So I, yeah. it, I I turned that into okay, well, let me help to coach people. And yeah. I, you know, I've, I've always loved to network and connect with people. So I think it became a passion of how do I do? I got involved with my alumni club and things like that. But um it, it, it's interesting. So um Talk about more about how people can find you today. And again, it, it, you're not, there's not a business per se you're coaching, but talk a little more about that and, and the current team. And, and maybe somehow we can all band together and get you some superstar athletes there. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, you can uh, follow me at, at Coach October on Twitter. Also at Coach October on, um, on Instagram. Uh, you can, if you follow the Spider Football uh, Twitter as well. Uh, they they you'll see different things there as far as what's going on with the University of Richmond. I am on Facebook, um, not as much as I have been in the past, but I'm mainly on Twitter is where they can find me. Um, also on Coach Two, um, there's some if there's an aspiring coach that uh, is looking for some drills. I have some free drills that uh, have been used at different uh, events that I've been part of um, that I use for my players currently. They can find that as well. That's on your, is that on your website or what they use? Like if you go to my Twitter, it's actually a link on the header. Okay. You can click on that and there's videos and, and, um, and there's, I think there's two free videos. One is of, uh, when I was fortunate enough to speak at the AFCA, uh, convention, uh, for one of the wide receiver buzz sessions. Um, I believe there's one of that. And then I think there's another one during the pandemic. There was a buzz session, uh, not a bus session, but like a wide receiver deal. There's something there as far as that goes. But yeah, there's different stuff that you can uh, access. And then the one thing I forgot to mention earlier when we we're talking about what you do, you also mentioned you do some public speaking. You want to talk a little about that? Uh, oh, yeah, just that, that was, that was, that's kind of the AFCA deal. Oh, gotcha. Where I've been, I've been part of, been part of that um, as far as uh, throughout the years. Uh, obviously, uh, they've, they, I've been fortunate enough to be selected to those things. Gotcha. Uh, and so, uh, you know, some of the NFL stuff as well. So it's been, it's been cool. It's been a great, great journey. Um, and I'm still, still growing. I'm in the other phase of it, you know, and, and uh, trying to push uh, to my dreams and coaching now, but ultimately it's about the players. Yeah. And it's about, you know, making sure that I do the best I can to make sure I can, uh, allow those players that I'm that I've been fortunate enough to be in charge of to witness some of the experiences that that I was fortunate enough to experience. You know, um, I tell them all the time, I uh, not really been there, done that, but hey, I got the T-shirt and the trophy. It's not about me. You know, I I, I don't want the praise. I I want you guys to get the praise. We have a saying in our room. It's, we say, when one shine, we all shine. And so that's right. Uh, that that's that's really what it's about it's about them yeah. well uh it was great talking today just uh you know people can find us on uh, alumni direct.com uh twitter linkedin facebook all those and you know we want to continue having shows like this and and you know i mentioned um there are uh you know plenty of issues with um, you know, mental health issues and things like that with athlete uh, transition but there's also a lot of positives in helping 
to grow businesses and entrepreneurship and all that. So we definitely want to be a part of that. So look out for more shows like this. And, and, you know, we're looking to add different types of resources to the platform. So thank you again, everybody. Uh, appreciate your time today. No doubt. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, you're welcome.